Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Bodacity Show. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Jeanette Anderson, and I'm here with the fabulous Karen Joy Fritz, who I know from various places, but we're in a mastermind together, and I've brought her in to talk to my mastermind group because she is fabulous at really supporting entrepreneurs, and especially women entrepreneurs, at taming the tech tension and stress busting all of the shoulds and have tos around how to get organized, how to get productive, and how to get shit done. So welcome, Karen. I'm going to give you her formal introduction in just a second, and then we'll find out something juicy about her and get rocking. If you have questions, please put them in the chat, and we'll, if I can find the chat, then we'll answer them. And we'll, if not, then please put them in the chat, and Karen will answer later on. So glad you're here. Happy to see you all. And let me tell you a little bit about Karen. So Karen Joy Fritz is your go-to guide in both the inner and outer adventures of small business. Her game, Path, oh, I should have it to hold up. It's a great game, I played it. Integrates her success in seven-figure entrepreneurial ventures, multiple coaching certifications, and delight in custom-designed tech solutions. Karen sees how you are ideally suited for what you're here to do. Aligning strategy and systems to you makes success sustainable, both financially and energetically. Karen is equally at home exploring motorcycling, motherhood, management, or meditation, anything that brings her deeper into the experience of aliveness. Great intro. Welcome, Karen. I'm so happy to see you again. Thank you so much. I love being together with you, Jeanette. Thank you. It's so funny and awkward sitting through your intro and waiting and yes, I'm great. I'm that and all that and a bag of chips and even more. Um, <laughs> so welcome. Now we start off by saying, okay, tell us something you see that we wouldn't guess and wouldn't expect and um, wouldn't find on your website or anywhere else if we went to look. So tell us something more about you. You know, here's the thing about me. I love the adventure side but I'm basically domestically challenged. <laughs> We're gonna go with that. Don't like the cooking or any of the housing stuff. And in fact, I used to tell my husband that I would be happy to make dinner any night that he wanted Oreos and milk. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and uh, I love the husband, my husband. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so you've been doing this kind of work for quite a while, right? I have. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how you got into doing this, because this wasn't where you started. So you studied a bunch of other things and you've had, like most of us, quite the circuitous is not an easy word, uh, journey to get to this point. But, but tell us a little bit about how you got interested in doing the work you do. The real tipping point for me going into this as my work was after I had a motorcycle fall and a brain injury mm -hmm. and I lost access to memory. I also lost access to language. Mm -hmm. So that's been an interesting journey, but I started really turning to the computer to remember all the things. I used to be one of those people. I just knew in my head when I needed to be somewhere and what I, and where the kids clothes were and like all the stuff until I didn't. Mm -hmm. And that was when I really had to turn to the computer and I thought, oh, you know what? There are a lot of people who could use this all the time. And next thing I know, I'm making a presentation to my motorcycle club about Evernote. <laughs> okay, well, that's an interesting leap. And so, uh, and by the way, at some point, I really do want you to tell me more about Evernote. And so you like technology. <laughs> I do. <I, laughs> <laughs> yes, I am your friendly neighborhood geek. I, I have the degree in it. And I went from that into Hewlett Packard and did some development and then was a software project manager. Mm. So it was really about using the technology to manage the technology project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is important and interesting and somewhat onerous. So speaking of managing things with tech, let's talk about entrepreneurs 
who typically it's not their juice and their jam. And at some, at, in a moment, I want to talk about when we should start bringing on what technology, because that is one of the big challenges for a lot of people uh, is they try and do too much too soon. But what do you think is one or two of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs making when it comes to trying to be productive? I would say that when it comes to actually being productive, the biggest mistake I see is people leaving all the notifications on all of their apps, on all of their devices. So obviously, as I'm on with you here, my phone is in airplane mode. Nobody's going to need me in the next 35 minutes. I'll be okay. And somehow when we go into a small business, there's this sense of of fear or a desperation. Like I have to be on call. What if I miss that one call? And it's really not the way things work. Nobody particularly wants to be called back right away. Mm -hmm. And there's a way to say, these are the people and the circumstances that have immediate access to me. In general, my family has a specific tone for their texts because my kid has health issues. So if he texts me, yes, I want to receive it. So that's like the inner circle. Maybe a VIP client would have that or whatever. And then there's a group of people that I might want to get back with in a couple hours, two to four hours is what I might tell them generally. Mm -hmm. And then there are other people, yeah, I'll get back with you in 24 hours. And there's a lot of subscriptions and stuff that I get that if I answer that in a week, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to feel like I'm a bad person if I don't get back to everybody right away because that interrupt driven looking for the interrupts becomes addictive. And it splits my attention so that I'm too fragmented to get the big pieces done. Totally. I know that's often the case for me. And there's this kind of Pavlovian twitch that happens when something comes in or pops up or whatever. It doesn't matter what we're doing. You can't not look. It's just against human nature. So one of the mistakes that we make is that we're interruption driven and we don't manage notifications. What's another, I know for me, one of the things that I find really daunting and overwhelming in terms of managing it is email. And I say major air quotes because I have, I don't know, 10,000 in my inbox or something like that. And I've just given up as far as any kind of process around that. What's, what are some tips for people around managing their emails? Yeah, actually, I'm putting together a little class on that for your group. Okay. The next one. Yeah. Here's a tip. First of all, make sure that everything is filtered and folded, whether your email uses rules or labels or whatever, have it automatically self-sort. And for most of the places that we get our email address, There's a way that we can modify it so that it sorts, for example, my normal address, Karen at KarenFritz.com. But I have another address that is sub at KarenFritz.com that I use for all the subscribing and opt-ins and so on. When I buy from somebody, I use Karen at. But if it comes to me at sub, it goes in the subscriptions folder, lower priority. Mm. And then I have Finn. All my financial stuff comes to Finn and automatically goes into the finances folder. Oh, smart. Yeah, yeah. So that way it's, you can use multiple addresses. They're all related. They all come to the same emailer, but it all gets sorted out. And I know, again, what do I have to look at now? And what's just not that relevant, not that urgent? Great idea, especially around the subscriptions, because I know if people are like me, I want to go check out what lead magnets I have, what their process is, and then I get on their list, and before I remember to uh, unsubscribe, I get a whole stream of stuff, and it's, yeah, and especially from some, you get really inundated. I know that a lot of what you do in your approach is very much around what I'll call a feminine model or uh, not this typical kind of masculine driven orientation that a lot of us are taught, especially when it comes to managing our time, being productive, et cetera, et cetera. So why don't you talk a little bit about how you approach that? You know, a lot of what's out there in terms of productivity 
is all about optimizing and maximizing and how much can you get done in such a short time? And it's, it really is an approach that comes from the industrial revolution. Like how can we make the manufacturing line as efficient as possible? And that's fine for a manufacturing line. However, for a human who's involved in creative process or building connections, it's not a production line. And it's not the same every day. And frankly, I'm not the same every day, right? My energy ebbs and flows during the day, during the month, during the seasons of the year. And so what I wanna do is be able to use my tools to get my productivity, my to-do list to adapt to me. One of the things that I love to do, and all tools will have a way to do it, is to tag each of the tasks with the quality of energy that I need to be in to do that task. So I have things tagged active, go run the vacuum. <laughs> and I have things tagged creative. If I'm developing social posts or doing some kind of creative writing exercise. And then there's connective kinds of energy. And frankly, there are times a day, I don't want to talk to anybody. But there are other times, like, yeah, let's do this now. There's meditative stuff. There's clarity things. Like now is a good time to do my QuickBooks, my bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And what I can do is check in with me first and say, what's the quality of energy I have? Have I had my coffee? Have I had breakfast? Like, where am I on my energy level? And then look at my list and say, what's the list of useful things I can do given this energy level? And so there's always something that progresses me toward my goal, but doesn't feel like it's pushing me so hard to be something or someone that I'm not. So I get to really be me in a sustainable way. That's very cool. Susan Baron Finn said, this is a wonderful slant on productivity. Thanks for the tips. And then Margaret asked, just a moment, let me just quickly grab hers. It was, is there a recommended way to get more clear on when one is in each of the energy straight, say, states? <laughs> so how do you recommend people get clear on where they're at and what they right. could be doing? Yeah. So this is where the background in meditation comes in. And, and being a certified coach, your body can only be in the present moment. Your attention can zip off to the past or it can worry about the future. It can be thinking about how do I look or what's going on with somebody else. So it can go to all these different places, but your body is always in the present moment. So bringing the attention in and down. You know, some people say, take a deep breath. But I actually think about bringing my attention down as though I were looking out of my, my womb space, looking out of my hara, if you're into more of an Asian perspective on it. And as I'm in that space, I can feel my feet. I can feel like what is, what's the sensitivity of my fingers? And as I'm in my body, then I'm like, okay, action oriented have I just had my coffee and I'm ready to do something or am I like ready to get focused in my head am I wanting to reach out to somebody have I got that rain creativity opening up that open sense and that's how I know that I'm really aligned with the energy that's here now is to be able to check in deeply with where my body is and what does it actually feel like because I've learned, what does excitement feel like in my body? What does anger feel like when I'm frustrated? What is, and I don't have to be afraid of any of the emotions. They all just come and go. But by getting really intimate with them, I can not be afraid of them. I can rechannel them into doing something that progresses what's important to me. Mm -hmm. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. And I, I love that 
tip and that framing on that, that our body is always in the moment, our intention and our mind and our thoughts, not so much. And so coming back to the body, coming back and being present there brings us back to the moment, which is a great practical little tip. I just haven't heard it phrased that way. And then tuning in from there to what is going on and what do I feel? And therefore what would be most in alignment or really perhaps another way to think of it, what would be easiest right now? Would it be easiest to move? Would it be easiest to be creative? What would be easiest and feel most aligned or juicy? And I know, you know, so that brings up a few, a few questions and points. Okay. One of the things that I know often gets in the way is this sense of shoulds and have tos. <laughs> Uh, I, I, cause I can hear people and a little bit in the back of my head say, well, that's all very great, but I have this huge long to-do list. And so I don't have the luxury of tuning into my creativity and deciding to go and be creative right now. I've got all the shit to do. So <laughs> what do you say to that? Cause, cause I know it's yeah. a very common phenomenon. First of all, take that whole list of shit to do and get it out of your head. Because if you don't, right, from the neuropsych background, what I know is the mind will naturally rehearse the list. Don't want to forget anything, so I'll just rehearse the list. That's an energy leak. So at the very least, get it out on paper. If you want to ever be able to have somebody else do some of it, you're going to have to put it into the computer. And once it's in the computer, everything, like total, I've got things in the computer like I, I know that in October, I need to have my sprinkler system blown out because it's in there on an annual repeat. I never have to think, will I remember? Mm. And I know that every Friday I take the trash out and I get to start the morning on Friday by checking something off <laughs> as my little dopamine hit. So it's all in the computer. And then each Monday morning, I bring it down to what are the things that I want to have happen this week? And then that's the only thing I look at for the rest of the week. I have an inbox and more stuff can go in there, but I don't rehearse the whole list. I don't go back and rescan the list every day. So the key is when I make my list on my day, mm -hmm. here's the question that I ask. What three things do I want to have completed by the end of this day? It's not about should. It's not about have to. It's not about what somebody else is going to think if I don't. It's what do I want to have completed? Now that all plays in there, mm -hmm. but fundamentally I own it. I, I love that. And the, I own it piece because that's a big transition for a lot of people to go from the have to's to the, what do I want to do? What do you say in terms of, because I know a lot of your orientation is a lot more around commission driven and flow than push and structure well, there's structure in your format, but, but the kind of traditional perspective on structure. So really one of the biggest challenges, and I know for me, I'm dealing with this right now myself as well, is permission for, to be pleasure led instead <laughs> of should and have to driven. And so, because there's this notion that if I just did what I want to do, then I probably wouldn't do any of this shit. Right. <laughs> or very little of it. So how do we deal with that? Because I've, I had, I've had numerous conversations this week with myself and, and clients this week, last week, literally one client showing me page after page filled with to-do items. And she had three pages of to-do items for one day and was wondering why she was feeling a little dispirited about her business and <laughs> like she didn't want to do it anymore. And it's like, right? well, there's a clue. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's not fun. Yeah. So yeah. how do we let pleasure lead us more and still be productive? I think that there's a, a recognition that as our own business owners, there are some tasks that are just never going to be pleasant. We're allowed to have the rest of them be pleasant and make them pleasant, right? So Yes, there's a list of things that are involved in running a business. If you don't do bookkeeping, you're probably not going to be in business very long. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I want to have done bookkeeping mm -hmm. or whatever your item is for that. And there's a sense of following my energy for when it's going to happen 
It's on my weekly list. So anytime during the week, oh, there's the focus energy. I could do my bookkeeping. That helps me. The other thing is, what can I do to have these things be pleasurable? For example, can I have my to-do list have pretty pictures on it? Can I make like a mood board and use that as my screensaver? Can I, all these things, I'm pretty visual. A lot of people like music. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer silence. So my earbuds here have a silence mode. I can do a lot of things so that it's pleasurable and I can get up and take breaks because I'm self-employed. Nobody cares if I get up and go lie down and take a nap for 20 minutes. It's okay. It's okay. And I don't even have to justify it by saying so that when I come back, I'm more efficient. Mm -hmm. The truth is, by the end of this week, I will have gotten these many things done. Now, if you're overloading and you've got three pages of stuff for one day, that was never true anyway. That was never going to have happened. Yes. And so that, that element of reality of by the end of this day, some things will have happened and some things will not have happened. What do I choose? What is priority to me? And even using the old matrix, what's urgent, what's important, I, I tell my kids, never let what matters now get in the way of what matters most. Mm. And that way there's always that reference back to where am I really coming from? That's a, a beautiful comment and phrase and really important thing because we tend to get interruption driven, putting out fires, short-term reactions. There's already so many things and, and never say it again, never let what matters matters now, now get in the way of what matters most. Yes. That's brilliant. I'm going to write that one down. That's a, that's a <laughs> also really paper. good for budgeting money as well as time. Mm, yes, that's true too. So just one more quick question before we yeah. find out more about where they can find out more about you is I know a lot of people are told and think they have to have all sorts of everything automated right away and they have to have a big system in place and websites and funnels and crms oh my for many people who are in our tribe especially the coaches the solopreneurs the experts who sell what they know etc who are what i call building their revenue runway so they're not yet scaling they're not doing a huge amount of one to many. They don't have huge lists, et cetera, et cetera. They're getting going and managing mostly one to one with some one to many kind of delivery and they might have a program or whatever, but they don't have huge infrastructure and lots of team. For them, what technology should they have and what shouldn't they have at this stage? Because I know a lot of people, myself included, who donated at the church of Infusionsoft for years, got <laughs> no benefit whatsoever, much like a gym membership at campaign, get nothing out of it because I don't use it. And I know so many people who have so much stuff. They don't, they get confused, they get overwhelmed, they're not using it. What should they have? What shouldn't they have at that stage? And maybe how do you know when you need some additional tools? Yeah, you need some additional tools when things start falling through the cracks, right? Yes, you can start with the paper journal. At least write things down or they will start falling through the cracks. Most people at this point, most consumers, prospects, whatever you want to call them, expect to be able to go check your website. It's almost an online business card, but that's all it needs to be. It just needs to be, yes, I'm real. Yes, I can do a layout and make sure things work. So I'm reliable, right? But it can be one page that has a few sections on it. And that's all it is. It's a business card, like the old flyer that used to be. So it can be that simple. As you're going perhaps to local live meetings or Zoom meetings and meeting people, 
you want to have a place for them to be able to hang out with you for a while. You want to remember who they are, whatever it is. So often you want to gather their name and their contact. We used to have boxes full of business cards and, and never looked at them again. So if you're going to do the business card exchange, use your phone, take a picture and store it somewhere that's searchable. Or you can use a simple software like Pipedrive for people you want to talk to again, or MailChimp for people you want to be able to email some kind of remember me. But here's the key. Find something that's really simple. As Einstein said, as simple as possible, but not simpler. And expect you are going to outgrow this. So make sure that one of the features is the ability to export. Don't get locked in. So just starting with that assumption. Yeah, I need to be able to stay in touch, but I don't need all the bells and whistles until I need them. When I have enough people have told me like, oh, this is what works when you say it. Oh, this is what I want from you. And I can make a little gift around that. Then I might build out a way to deliver that gift. But it, the, the philosophy of if you build it, they will come. That's not going to be your friend. Especially if you're like me and you like tech because you'll spend so much time building and then rebuilding that you won't actually go talk to people. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I was typing your wise quote in. I didn't want to clicky clack. So I totally agree. And for many people, they build out all of these wonderful funnels and lead magnets. And it is important to start building a list, but only if you actually contact the list. <laughs> it doesn't really help to have a list that you do nothing with. Much like the cards in the basket that I have sitting over there from old networking when we actually had cards. Right, and yeah. Like, and have not contacted them or reached out. So what is, by the way, a quick tool for if you've got a bunch of cards that you want to get into a system somewhere, what do you, what would you recommend? There's a tool called Contact Plus. Contact Plus. That will okay. let you use your phone app, take a picture of the card, and it goes into a database that then you can funnel into where you really keep stuff. Cool. Okay. Let's we'll also do that for pages because I am so old school. And here's how, when I do a call, a discovery call with someone, I do this because I mostly, I don't want to be typing and so forth. But the problem with it is, of course, is the only way it's searchable is if I flip through my binder. Right. And I can't schedule it and I can't do all that kind of stuff. So uh scanning was there a tool for getting that in somewhere that actually has yeah there's a really cool tool that you could put almost anything into and it's called evernote <laughs> okay <laughs> we'll talk about that <laughs> okay right? over time not immediately but they have this behind the scenes processor that goes through your handwriting and turns it into searchable text oh. now it'll never come out as text but you can search like every time that I've written the word introvert or something like that. And every Facebook quote that I've had that has the word introvert in it and, uh, and it'll bring all of those back to the surface for you. Okay. Awesome. All right. We've got a little over cause I could ask you questions, all the <laughs> but tell me where people can go and get, you've got a, a great little free tool or great. Let me take out the little, you've got a great free tool for people. Where do they go and what is it? So tell us a bit about that. You know, most of what I do for folks is help them to find the existing tools that fit their personality style. And so I put together a little quiz that does a great first cut at that for whether you're more people oriented or task oriented, whether you're more list oriented or more visual in the way you think about things. And it just walks you through some questions and then comes back and says, these are the tools that are at least most likely to work for you. And then it follows up with some processes to help make them actually fit your working style. And that's at karenjoyfritz.com slash tool quiz. 
cool. I love it. Okay, I put the link into the chat here. And and how do if people want to reach out to you directly or find out more about your connect with you, so they can go to karenjoyfritz.com if they want more information. But really, just give her a call. So how can they reach out to you? What's the best way? I like email. Okay. So my email is karen at karenfritz.com. And I'll generally give you a 24 hour turnaround on that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that's what works best for me. Okay. Awesome. That's beautiful. And uh, so now I'm curious because you've got uh, an email address that's different than your URL on your tool. You've got karenjoyfritz.com and karenfritz.com. You just have one pointing to the other, or are they two yeah. separate? Like, yeah, it all comes to the same place. Joy is a chosen middle name. Right. That's what I wanted to be able to carry with me. That's why that's out there. I love it. Okay, awesome. All right. So if you have further questions for Karen, Mark Porteous is sending us some love. If you have any further questions for Karen, by all means, please put them in the chat. She's a member of the group. So if we've got some questions, I'll make sure she sees them and, and gives you some information and answers very generous in supporting us. That's part of why I brought her in as one of the advisors for our Faster Mind community so that every quarter you get an opportunity to talk to her about productivity and how to like master your tech at the stage that you're at because we need some help with that. It may not be the part that we love, but it's a part that we need to deal with and being really productive in a way that's filled with pleasure instead of have tos and shoulds. I think that should be more of a thing. <laughs> so I'm with thank you, on you that. for being uh, an advocate for that, Karen. And thanks for coming, Susan and Mark and Margaret and all of the rest of you who watch. We appreciate you being here on the Bodacity Show. We have some more great speakers lined up. If you are a subject matter expert who is passionate and has a lot of value to share, please reach out to me if you'd like to be on the Bodacity Show, because I love to feature especially our members. As long as you got some great stuff to give our, our group, like some of the tips here today, then I would love to feature you and give you some exposure because this is all about now that we are shifting the name from Bodacity's Action Heroes. It makes my heart pitter patter a little bit to let go of that to the Purpose and Profit Sisterhood. Very sure. Mastering the inner and outer game of business. It's really about that component. And so thank you, Karen, because you're really good at both the mindset that's needed and margaret saying thanks for bringing you back and more great learnings here today mastering that inner game and how we think about our work our business our tech etc in a way that works for us i really appreciate that orientation that you have and that you bring i think it's really a valuable i'm going to call it a feminine model as part of reinventing business is to start doing things that are more integrous, more in alignment with who we are, how we work, so that we make it fun to do what we do. So we make it enjoyable and sustainable as a result. So thank mm -hmm. you for being part of that solution. And thank you so here. much, Jeanette. Have a wonderful, bodacious week, everybody. Happy to have you and have a wonderful, bodacious week. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.